Welcome back guys. So today's video is going to be another installment in our series of smalls that sell. What this series is all about is taking popular items from the big box stores that are selling like crazy, breaking those down so we can build them and sell them ourselves. In this episode, I will be teaching you how to build this super cool child's picnic table. No, this is not technically considered a small. I would call this like a medium, but it is super easy to build and the profit margins are crazy on it. So Let's go ahead and dive into this video. If this is the first episode from this series that you are watching, not only do we break down how to build these items, but we'll also be discussing marketing techniques for these. Before we get into this first one, I just want to give a huge shout out to the Patreon community. It's growing like crazy and we have all kinds of awesome discussions and feedback. So if you're interested in anything like this, make sure to check that out. I'll throw a link into the description. So it's that time of the year. We're having get togethers outdoors. If you have a pool, you're having pool parties, barbecues, sitting out back, whatever you like to do. But one of the main problems that you have with that is organizing all the pool toys, the outdoor furniture, cushions and pillows, things like that. Well, what caught my eye about this first one is it will solve the problem and it's an organization problem and you can build one for really cheap. So the OPB has their version. Yes, it's a pretty neat product for $400. I don't think it's $400 neat, but it does the job. Yeah, they've got a couple pull noodles in there. Got a $400 noodle holder. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this thing down. This thing is super easy to build and would be a perfect fence picket project. So if you actually look at this thing, it's essentially just a bunch of strips that are put together. But the super cool thing about this is it's actually just put together in four panels. If you look really close at the legs, the legs are only made onto the front panel and the back panel. So the side parts of the panel for the front and back are actually the legs. So the actual dimensions for this thing is 36 inches long, 24 inches deep, and then 20 inches wide. And just by looking at this, the strips look like that they're only like two, two and a half inches wide. They look wider than that because they had put smaller items actually in this thing to make it look bigger. So let's start with the front and the back panels. And I've got a couple boards here just to use as examples. We'll say that this is our 36 inch leg. That's all that we're gonna do is lay out two of these on a flat surface, and then we'll take our horizontal boards and we will connect them just like this. So just a butt joint. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. It looks like that they actually use dowels, but if it were me, I would just put this together with some pocket hole screws. And then you'll attach the other leg on your panel the exact same way. So now we have the top rail installed. Now you would just need to decide how far off the ground you would want your bottom. Let's say four inches here. You'd measure up four inches from the bottom of your leg and then attach this the exact same way. And the only thing left that you'd have to do for this panel is using equal spacing with the rest of your horizontal strips in using the same method as we did for the top and the bottom. So we've already got the front panel and the back panel assembled. Now the two end panels. So the two end panels are actually assembled pretty much the same, except there's no leg. So again, let's say that this is 36 inches tall. Our two vertical boards for our end panel, since they do not have legs, will only need to be 32 inches tall. And again, we'll lay these out, flat surface. Starting at the top, we'll put our top board on. And then on this one, our bottom board will actually be at the very bottom and be attached. And then again, equal spacing in between. And you can use your first one as reference for spacing for that. So now you have all four of your panels assembled. The only thing that you have left to do is to put those together. So to put our panels together, we're putting our front panel Let's say this is our front panel and this is our end panel. And we're just going to lap it just like this. There's a couple of different ways that you can attach these. If you'd like to, you could pre-drill and just put exterior screws through this. Or from the inside, you could put pocket hose screws to hold that together. You could actually hammer in some wooden dowels and cut those off flush. That's only if you wanted to spice it up a little bit. And then we have the bottom strips. So let's say that this is the bottom of our panels. All that they have done is just fasten it just like this. If you look closely, it is not inset in. The material is actually really thin there. So super easy install. Once all four panels are put together, I would turn it upside down, lay my cross slats on top like this, pre-drill, throw some exterior screws in there, you're good to go. I just explained to you how to build this entire thing and you can knock this thing out super quick using the same thickness of material. And what the PB has figured out is this is popular. People are buying this outside type of item that can get wet that you can put wet things in. So what they have done is actually created a whole line of products. And yes, you can make every single item in this photo for a tenth of the price of what they want for just one thing. We'll hit on one other item that's in this picture just here in a bit. But if you decide to make these things to sell, make a whole collection of this stuff. It's all using the same type of material. It will all match and people will love it. Again, the PB is getting $400 out of one of these things, depending on what type of material that you use. You probably build one for about 20 bucks. I would stage these things up just like they have. Except maybe paint one up with some popular colors, maybe some alternating colors in the slats. Depending on your location, you shouldn't have any issues getting 100 to 150 bucks out of these things. And this next one I've actually seen on several sites, which is an indicator that something is in, something is selling 
selling and something is hot. These stores will track what their competitors are selling and they're going to make their own version. So it's going to be these hanging rope signs. Okay, so this is a pretty cool idea. And again, this is a super easy project. That's all that this is, is wooden slats and rope. So what makes this cool is you can actually put several different little sayings, several different words on one sign, and they're perfect for decorating the indoors or outdoors. The bare bones plain sign is 30 bucks. Each one of the strips that are in these pictures, they're all around five inches wide by about 16 inches long. Guess what we can use for this? There are four slats. A fence picket's around five and a half inches wide by 72 inches long. So with one fence picket and a rope, you can make this. So my area pickets have came down. The pine pickets you can pick up for about two bucks and the cedar pickets you can pick up for a little over $3. I think they're about three and a quarter, something like that. If it were me, spend a little extra money for the cedar. They're usually drier, cleaner, easier to work with, easier to stain and easier to paint. So with profit margins like this, you know the old saying, you could spend a dollar to save a dime that could come into play. So to save a buck for this build, you're gonna be sanding more, the wood's gonna be harder to work with, and you may actually have to wait for the wood to dry. So go ahead and spend the extra buck for this one. And if you look really close at the sides of these things, they're only about half of an inch thick. You can use whatever that you have, but you don't need anything any thicker than that. Even if you had material that was a bit thinner, it would be fine. Anything that hangs, actually it's lighter the better so as far as building these things i go ahead and cut my planks to the length that i want it looks like they've drilled these hose about an inch in from the side an inch from the top and then measuring from the bottom an inch up and then for the whole size that you actually drill will depend on the rope that you choose so whatever size rope that you think that looks the best drill the hose about an eighth of an inch larger than that and for the rope that's all that you would do is start on one of your bottom boards tie a knot into the back and then just feed it through the top rope go up go into the back of your second board over through their hole, all the way until you reach the top. Leave the amount of slack at the top that you would actually like to hang this with, then work your way down the opposite side. Once you get to the bottom, again, feed it through and then tie a little knot. So to keep these into place, instead of having to tie all kinds of little knots the whole way that you're doing this and making it almost impossible to get your knot spaced just right, if you look at this plain one, this is actually the back view of it. And that's all that they have done is once their boards were spaced the way that they wanted, they attached the rope to the board using staples. I would go ahead and throw some glue in there as well and then just staple the rope to the board just to keep the board from moving any weight will actually create tension and it shouldn't slide up and down theoretically but throw a staple in there just be on the safe side and again there's all kinds of different designs for these things but almost every one that i've seen has been kind of like a neutral color or a light color the light blues grays off whites things like that and the sayings on there we've talked about the multiple different ways that you can apply those if you have a laser engraver you can use that if you have a vinyl cutter all of this could be put on in vinyl that's all that they've done here is just taking a stencil put it over the top spray painting the saying on and you're ready to rock. For me, I'll start off with common sayings that could pretty much apply to everyone. Or if you're going to get into personalizing these signs, I would double the price. As far as the price point goes, you can get the bare bone sign for around 30 bucks. As fast as you could pump these out, make these, the cost of material, probably everything together is going to be around four bucks, maybe five total. $30 wouldn't be a bad price point even for one that is painted. If you like these types of videos and these types of builds, make sure to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop back over to the PB Outdoor collection here i'm hitting on this because right now is the time to sell these things they're neat and obviously people are buying these and this is going to be the outdoor shelf i think it's 425 dollars on sale so this entire shelf is only 13 inches deep by 24 inches wide by 48 inches tall and they use the exact same type of slats as they did for the first one so if those were two inch slats we'll say that these are two inch slats so let's go ahead and break this down again another super simple build so let's start by making a front and back panel so yes there is a floor at the very bottom of this but it'll be easier to add that at the end so to me at the bottom it looks like that they only left about an inch of space from the ground we're going to say that the spacing between each one of these horizontal strips is three inches so for the panels, I would again start with my legs. I would lay them flat. So they're going to be 48 inch legs. I would start at the bottom, measure up about five inches, which is going to leave us some space for the floor and go ahead and put my first horizontal board on. The difference is going to be last time when we put our horizontal boards on, we put them on like this a butt joint onto the leg. This time we're gonna go to the center of our leg and you can throw in a couple of screws here. Then you'll measure another three inches from the top of this board, throw in a couple of screws, repeat until you get to the height that you want. But this looks like it's about halfway, so right around the 20, 24 inch mark. And now for the shelf in the middle, we have our panel flat. I measure up to the halfway point, which looks like it's only gonna be about another 12 inches. And then I will install another horizontal slat the exact same way that we did for the bottoms. And for the top, it looks like that they may have actually went back to a butt joint. I don't know 
know why they would do that when the rest of this build is just an overlap. So we're going to stick with the overlap. So we're going to do the exact same thing for the very top. We're only going to go to about the halfway point. So now we have our entire panel made for the front and we'll make one identical for the back. Now as far as connecting these two together to make our sides, so the back side of your panels should look like this. Now that's all that you would need to do to connect this is to take another board, whatever width that you would like the shelf to be. Again, this one's about 13 inches, but you would take another board and just set it right in like this. Now we'll have a butt joint on the inside of this leg. Throw a couple screws in the end of this and they are connected. You will do that all the way down. There is another way that you can do this. I think that this way would probably be a little easier, but if you would like to, you could put together all of your horizontal boxes before you put the legs on, just with regular butt joints, space those out, and then just add the legs to the front and the back. A couple of different ways to do it, whichever is easier for you, go for it. And then as far as the shelves go, that's all that they have done is the boards that are on the ends that are connecting the two legs. They just added boards on top all the way across to make these shelves. Super easy to make if you just stop and think about it. And this thing's 425 bucks, but it's a great idea for outside storage. Anything that is wet, anything that you do not want to blow away, like the beach balls, like the pool noodles. You notice how they staged those up. These are the things that typically blow away and you have to chase them down and mow over them or whatever. And the cool thing about the shelf is they've actually put towels on there. So stage certain ones up like this to really market towards pool owners because if someone owns a pool, they will buy this. So then I would stage one up that is completely opposite nothing to do with the pool inside the slats on the bottom i would throw in like outside couch cushions things like that and then on the racks maybe some grilling utensils outside candles just anything that would pertain to outside entertainment so again this is something that i would not consider a small but is just as easy to make as the smalls that we cover and the profit margin for something like this is crazy high for me if i've made this out of cedar pickets something like that again they're wanting four and a quarter for it on sale i would at least start this out at 150 200 see how they move and go from there the next one's going to be the child's picnic table this thing is actually pretty cool and not small so what gave me the idea to cover this build in a video is I made one of these for my kids over 15 years ago. They've loved it. They've used it every single day. And we still actually have the original that kids still love to use whenever they come over to visit. I know one of the big questions that I will get is, are you going to make this out of treated material? No, I'm not going to make it out of treated material. I'm not going to have a kiddo sit and eat at something that's treated material. And then the next question is going to be, and then what's going to keep it from rotting? We'll just cover that real quick. Things that are made for the outdoors, they do not have to be made out of treated material as long as it's not in the ground or has contact with the ground. But even if it does have contact with the ground, there are things that you can do to prevent things from rotting. So think about these old barns and structures that's been around for over a hundred years. That's not treated material, but most of them were painted. So as long as you have something to seal the wood, be it some type of an oil-based stain, some type of paint, anything that seals the pores of the wood, any of these items can last for 100 years. You notice on these old barns, most of the time, the only rot that they have on them is going to be at the very bottom of the siding. That's actually where the material touched the ground. And the reason for that is the way that it's cut, the end grain acts like a sponge. It will soak moisture up into the wood. So that's all that we need to do to prevent that is seal this up. If you've ever noticed whenever you're painting or staining a piece of wood and the end grain just keeps taking the stain and you have to do it over and over and over, it's because like I said, it's acting like a sponge. So we need to seal this. Again, you can seal this with paint, any type of oil. But what I really like to use is the spray on rubber that comes in a can. So anything that I have that's outside, I just take that, spray it on there and we'll seal these pores completely and you do not have to worry about rot. So for this build, I used one untreated two by four that is 10 foot long and it was only $3.98. I was actually very surprised by that price, but that's what it was. And I'll also be using three two by six by eight foot long. Those were $4.98. So you can build this entire table for less than 20 bucks. Let me show you how I did it. Okay, so we're going to start by cutting our legs, top boards, and bench boards out of our two by six material. I'm cutting each side of the legs at 38 degrees, leaving us at 22 and 5 sixteenths from tip to tip. Once we have those cut, I'll be cutting five more boards with square ends at 35 and 3 quarters of an inch. And then I'll cut my cross braces out of a 10 foot 2 by 4. I'll need two of these that are 34 and a half inches long at 22 degrees on each end. And I'll need two of these at 16 inches long at 22 degrees at each end. And then once we have those cut, this is what you should end up with. And as always, if you're a plans in the hand type of person, I'll link my Etsy shop in the description. 
and now to assemble. I went ahead and painted all of my parts, and I'm going to lay my legs out where the tips are touching. And then I'll start at the top with my 16 inch cross brace, centering that up, and then install it using two and a half inch screws. And then for my 34 and a half inch cross brace, I'm going to drop down three and three quarters of an inch and install this the same way as I did for the top. And now we have one leg assembly built. Now we just need to build another one. Once you have both leg assemblies built, let's go ahead and put our bench seats on. First, I'll square my leg assembly and then leave a two and a half inch overhang for my bench. Then I'll attach the bench to the bottom cross board using two and a half inch screws on each side. Once both benches are installed, let's go ahead and move on to the top. For the top boards, I'm gonna be leaving the same two and a half inch overhang and I'm gonna start with my center board. I'll install using the same two and a half inch screws. Then I'll move on to the two outer boards. I'll be spacing the outer boards 3 16ths of an inch away from the center board, which I'll just be using my speed square to get that. And that is how with $20 worth of material, you can end up with something like this. It's that easy to build one of these things. You do not even need a miter saw. Whenever I made the first one 15 years ago, I did everything with a circular saw. And this is one of those items that's going to fall into that golden category where people will spend money on it because it will be for their kid or their grandkid or a loved one. And again, the profit margins on this can be astronomical. We already said that we can build this for less than 20 bucks. You have to add in the cost of the screws and the paint, things like that. But what if you get it up to $25? Look at the competition for these things. They're cheaply made. They're only about an inch thick and they start at $200. I've seen them a size for $500 and guarantee you that those will not last for 15 years sitting out in the weather in the sun where these will. I would sell them unpainted, but make sure to inform the customer that they need to be stained or painted. And if you decide to sell these painted, make up two or three different ones with different color schemes. So make one up that is stained all like a cedar color. Make another one up that is painted like I painted this one. And if you really wanted to go over the top, you could actually drill a hole and put an umbrella in there. Regardless if you're building these things to sell or for your own home, the kids will love them and there's nothing better to a child than having a picnic outside on their very own picnic table. So this next one is going to be an ornate wall bracket. Okay, you notice how I said ornate just to kind of spice this thing up a little bit, but it's gonna be cut out with a jigsaw and you're gonna use a construction grade two by eight, two by six, whatever that you would like, depending on the size shelf that you would like to put on it. The cheapest that I could find, these were $40 a pair, and they are super simple to make. So like I said, depending on the size shelf that you would like to put on these, let's say that we're just going to use a 2 by 8 So that's all that you would do is whatever length that you would like this bracket, you would cut your 2 by 8 to that length. Let's say that this one's about 10 inches long, 7 and a half inches wide, which is your 2 by 8 and they're using a shelf, and the shelf does not come with this. This is just the brackets. And they're using probably a 10-inch shelf, which is just a painted two by 10. So for this one, you're going to have to do a little bit of drawing. Okay. And this time I'm not going to do it for you with a stencil or anything like that. You have to work on the creativity part. What is the worst thing that could happen? You can mess up and you can erase it. You've got this. It's up there. Just try it. You'll never know until you try it. And you can actually try it with a piece of paper. So start out with a piece of paper, draw your 90 degree angle. Go ahead and draw a second line to your 90 degrees. So to make this a little easier, we want all of the parts of this to be about an inch thick. So move out about an inch, then draw another 90 degree. Now on the tips, where you can put in your little arches or whatever that you would like. If you like this design, look at this picture while you're drawing it, but it can really be anything that you would like. And then continue that for the rest of the outside of this design. The inside part that's gone, again, you'll just sketch that out. Make sure that you have about an inch on all of your curves, and then you have your inside design. Once that's on your paper, transfer that over to a piece of cardboard, cut that out, as well as the inside design. Now you have a template, something that you can hang on your wall, you, you can make multiples of, and you can do it super fast. You have your template, you have your two by eight, lay your template on there, just trace that out. The exterior part of this, you'll just take a jigsaw and jigsaw around your lines. You can always go back with a sander, smooth those up, kind of round those corners over just a little bit, just to make things flow. The inside, that's all that you need to do to cut that out, is to drill a hole in the part that you want cut out as close to one of your lines as you can get, without actually going over the line. Start your jigsaw and work your way into the line and then you just follow that. Once you get to a corner, you may actually have to go back in a couple of times working your way down that line until there's enough material removed that you can turn your jigsaw blade to follow your next line. And that's what you're gonna do for each corner. And then you'll just follow any arch that you've made. It's as simple as that to cut this design out. And the cool thing is, 
It does not have to be this design. You can add your own to it. You may create something that is super cool that everyone wants. Have multiple options. But once you get this made, you'll need a way to mount it to the wall. We're going to be using a keyhole bracket for this. They're super cheap and you can pick them up on Amazon for around a quarter a piece. But to install this keyhole bracket onto the back, that's all that you would have to do is trace the outside of this bracket. Then I just put a little dot where each one of the screws need to go. Okay, so we'll pretend like I just traced this on there. I don't have one here, so this thing kind of looks like a peanut. Well, anyway, you've traced your bracket and then you have your drill bit that is the same diameter as this. What I would do is start at the top and the bottom, and you only need to drill down the thickness of your bracket. So it's probably only going to be like a sixteenth of an inch. The reason why we're doing that, so the bracket can sit flush inside the board and your screws will still have wood to bite into. Now, as far as the center or the keyhole part goes, I'll drill that down at least a half of an inch because that is what is going to be sliding over the screw that's sticking out of the wall and be able to go into that keyhole and lock into place. They are super easy to install. Once you install one, you can knock them out in probably less than a minute. But in order to do that, you have to attempt the first one, which may you have to believe that you can do it. I know that you can do it. You just have to tell yourself that you can. So as your homework for this week, I want you to draw this out on a piece of paper. Even if you don't want one of these things, draw one out just to show yourself that you can. Yes, it may get frustrating at times, but keep going. That's how you do things. That's how you learn things. If you're having trouble with some of these curves, find something that has a natural curve and actually use that. But draw it out on a piece of paper. If you like what you've drawn, transfer that over to a piece of scrap wood and cut it out. The next thing that you know, you may have a couple of these brackets already made and people will want them. Whenever I look at these things, I picture them painted in like a distressed white, but you may like it in like a dark stain. Either way, they're going to look good and they're super cheap and have a super high profit margin. So thank you guys so much for watching. You've got your homework. Just believe in yourself. I believe in you. You've got this. It's all a mindset. We've talked about all of this stuff. So find something that you're not comfortable doing, that you're not comfortable building and make yourself do it. Believe in yourself because if you stay in your comfort zone, then you're not growing. Keep yourself out of your comfort zone and you'll continue to grow. You've got this. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya.